Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we give God a hand of praise? Can we give God a hand of praise? Can we thank God for waking us up on this morning? Can we give God a hand of praise? Can we thank God for yet another day to be in the land of the living? We thank God for you, you, and you. We thank God for everyone in the building. We thank God for life, health, and strength. We thank God for just mercy on this day. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by way of the Church of United Church of Jesus Christ, Apostolic, and Inc., we, we say praise the Lord to everyone in their respectable places. We say praise the Lord to our Facebook family. We say praise the Lord. We thank God for yet another day and to be in the land of living. Amen. Okay, today our scripture will be coming from Ecclesiastes, the old book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number three. Should everyone stand and reverence the word for the book of Ecclesiastes? The rhetorical question is what time is it? I'm about to tell you what time it is. What time is it? That's the thought. Ecclesiastes 3, and the Solomon records in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, to everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and time to pluck up that which was planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast a waste and a time to gather stones again. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, a time to lose. A time to keep, a time to cast away. A time to rent, a time to sow. A time to keep silent, a time to speak. A time to love, a time to whore, a time of peace. What profit have he, the worker wherein he labored? I have seen the terrell which God have given to the sons of men to be exercised. And then, can we give God a hand praise and thank God for the reading of the word today? I greet you in Jesus' name. Receive ye our praise team in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can we give the Lord another hand praise? Tell somebody, it's time to worship the Lord on this morning. This is the time set apart where we come to give him some glory. This song just says, I'm a friend of God. Anybody excited and thankful that we are a friend of God? He's sticking closer than any brother. He loves us. Come on, sing with us. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? When I call, is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me.
Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Can I get a witness? Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. People from to worship him. The scripture said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. We come to lift up the mighty, 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 awesome, extraordinary name of Jesus. And we pray that our worship lift him, that he's pleased with everything we do. Come on, lift it up. Say flow to you. Flow to you. Songs of my heart 
you 
bless you. Let's give the Lord some praise. Let's clap our hands and say thank you, Lord. Let's clap our hands and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for rescuing me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because he rescues and he delivers. Hallelujah. Come on and clap those hands. He, he, he breathed the breath of life in your nostrils. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. He woke you up this morning. You did not die in your sleep. You ought to put those hands together again and again and again. Somebody choked on their own saliva last night. But you're here this morning. Can we put our hands together? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The song said, let all my worship flow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are thankful. We are grateful. We are thankful. We are grateful. We are grateful. And we are thankful. Let everything that have breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let all my worship flow to the Lord. We are thankful for being here this morning. We're going to ask everyone to stand. It is good as always to see all of our brothers and sisters coming out by faith and Worship in the Lord because the just shall live by faith. It's not always according to our emotions and feelings. It's by faith. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, we do it by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so the just. To live by faith. Let us look to the Lord. Let us lay it on the line. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> this morning, we first acknowledge you for who you are, for you are God Almighty, God meaning power, for you have all power. You are Lord, Lord meaning over all, for you are over everything, meaning you have power over everything. Nothing can move and exist except, Lord God, it be by your permission. Nothing, Lord God, can speak except it be by your permission. Oh, you are God alone and there's none before, neither shall there be any after you. You wrought the heavens, you wrought salvation by yourself. You are the one, Lord God, that the builders rejected, but yet you're still the rock of our salvation we thank you this morning Lord Jesus because there is none like you we acknowledge and extol you we exuberate you we lift you high above the heavens because the heavens of the heavens cannot contain you oh God but yet you fill every void you fill every space we thank you Lord God for all things for waking us up this morning we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with a mind to at least say thank you, at least acknowledge you. Because you told us in all things, Lord God, that we should acknowledge you and you will direct our path. We ask for forgiveness of sin. We ask, Lord God, that you would cleanse us and wash us and purge us with hyssop in the name of the Lord and make us whiter than the snow. We ask that you renew within us a right spirit. Lord Jesus, that we would have a right mindset for worship. A mindset that's conducive to praise and righteousness. We ask and pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you rebuke everything that's not like you. Rebuke every foul spirit. Rebuke witchcraft. Rebuke, Lord God, divisiveness. Rebuke separation. Rebuke Heketomaya in the name of Jesus Christ. Clear the air, Lord God, and clean it up 
in the name of the Lord that your glory can overshadow everything in the room. In the name of Jesus, rebuke it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, jealousy and envy, strife in the name of Jesus, that we can have a right spirit to worship you in the beauty of holiness. In the name of Jesus, that someone may have come in, Lord God, awkward, but your power that's in the atmosphere can cling them up in the name of Jesus. Your power and your glory that's in the atmosphere can rebuke everything. It can rebuke decisiveness. It can rebuke variation. Answer somebody's prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask and pray that you bless the musicians. Bless those that sing. Let it be done unto your glory and no self-grandizement. We ask that you remember the man as he comes uh, with the word of the Lord from heaven. That you will, Lord God, let your word be the answer to everything. In the name of the Lord, uh, let every soul be attentive to the things of God. We thank you, Lord God. Bless those that are home. Bless, Lord God, the Goodwin family. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless those that have unspoken requests. In the name of the Lord, you're able to do it, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We don't take it for granted that you can still pour out your healing virtue in the name of the Lord. And if peradventure, Lord, you decide not to heal, we ask and pray that you allow your grace to be sufficient in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord God. And before the day is out, according to your will, let us so repent in our heart. Let them be go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right where they're sitting, right where they're standing. Let someone be filled as they clap in their hands. Let someone be filled as they're standing in their pew. As they're at home listening to the live. You can do it. There's nothing that can stop you. Because you're Lord God Almighty. Oh, in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And we praise you for what you're going to do in the ensuing days. Somebody give God glory in the house. God wants praise. Somebody put those hands together and shout glory. Hallelujah. Come on and put them together. Hallelujah. Let the children put those hands together. Let the middle age clap their hands. Let the elderly put them together in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Please continue to worship with us in the name of the Lord.
to do my dance. I come to lift him up. I come to clap my hands. I come to clap my hands. I come to clap my hands. I come to do my dance. I come to do my dance. I come to do my dance. I come to lift him up.
Somebody put their hands on it. Know you got everlasting life. Wrap them hands a little harder. Come on. Woo! Everlasting life. Somebody give Jesus a great round of applause. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Somebody said, I haven't got there yet, but I know by faith my name is already written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, glory. I, woo, I know by faith that my name, this is, this is personal. Can you testify that your name, that you know by faith, that your name is already written in the Lamb's book of life? Come on and open up your mouth and just shout, thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a foregone conclusion. Amen. That my name is in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord. Mm. Glory be to God. And so I can rejoice in the midst of it all right now. Knowing that greater is coming. Glory be to God. We don't have to wait till it gets here. We can praise him in advance. God bless you today. We give God all the praise and the glory. It is, amen, an honor to be back in the household of worship, to worship the Lord together with the precious people of God. I don't take that for granted. It is truly a privilege. It is truly an honor to be able to worship and serve the Lord with other disciples that love God, that are truly called by his name and that love his word genuinely as it is written. We are grateful today for all things for we are definitely serving as soon coming king. Praise the Lord. And we need to keep our eyes, amen, very attentive and focused on what is transpiring in our society. I know people are happy that a stimulus package has been signed and money is coming in. God bless you for those that already got their money. Praise the Lord. I'm sure that you can find good use for it, but amen. Uh, the stimulus package money don't last long. Uh, $1,400 ain't going to take you but so far. Come on, talk back to me. Amen, somebody. Uh, while and yet we may be grateful and thankful for it, uh, but we've got, amen, a greater stimulus package coming. A city. A city. Streets of transparent gold somewhere I read it said it had 12 gates Whew. 12 foundations glory be to God names of the 12 disciples apostles were written therein come on talk back to me amen somebody oh and everything will be clean there all things are passed away and behold all things are going to be brand new Glory be to God. And so we're going to be in a place where we can give God praise and glory all the day long. That's going to be something glorious. I'm sorry. No troubles, no variations. BGE don't have a chance to be cut off. The lights can stay on all day because the glory of the Lord is going to shine. I don't have to ask nobody to turn the light on, turn it off. It's just going to be on because Jesus is always on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Heaven is going to be something beautiful. Woo! It's going to be so glorious that we can't even think about it. They gave us tidbits, but, but he says, eyes have not seen nor ears have even heard, nor has it even entered into the hearts of men what God has laid up for the righteous. So in other words, you can't even think how great heaven is going to be. But tell, just wave at somebody, tell them, heaven, heaven is going to be all of that. Woo! Hey, heaven going to be all of that. Woo! Hallelujah. Mm. it's just going to be glorious Satan won't can't be there to bother us no more temptation glory be to God no suffering no pain hallelujah we will not be defeated but we will celebrate in victory because the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world counted us worthy to be with him forevermore. Come on, clap your hands if you're already excited about the soon coming heaven. 
There shall be a new earth and a new heaven. For the old shall be burnt up with fervent heat. Glory be to God. Mm. Woo! Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says when you're on the housetop and he says, and God is coming back, he says, he says, don't worry about trying to go back in and get some stuff. Just look at somebody and tell them, leave your stuff in the house. God's coming back. You don't, you don't need to go grab nothing. Whatever you got with you is going to be enough for you to be translated. For the dead in Christ shall rise first, but we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. Tell somebody, we're going to do that together. We're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. We're going to heaven together. So we might as well worship right here together. be worth it. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Take your bruises now. Take your lumps now. Y'all hear what I said? I said take your bruises now. Take your lumps now. Some of you wondering why you got to go through what you got to go through. Take your bruises now. Take your lumps now. Stop crying about folks talk. They talking about me. Stop crying about folks talking about you. You're preparing to go to heaven. Oh, we got a whole lot to be praising them for. Woo, less complaints and more praise. Tell somebody less complaints and more praise. How about we start this week? Open up your mouth and repeat after me and say less complaints and more praise. Less complaints and more praise. Come on, clap your hands one more time. All right. Let's go into the Bible. There's a word from the Lord. I need your prayers on this Lord's morning, man, that we can Man, unload the cart appropriately. In Jesus' name. Matthew 25. <clears throat> we do honor God. He's worthy. He is beautiful. We love him. Amen. Because he first loved us. He's truly been so gracious to us. He's been a sweet God through this pandemic. Can you testify? That God has just been so mighty and so awesome and so powerful. His glory, hallelujah, still remains. We thank God for him and to our lovely and beautiful presiding bishop. God bless you. <laughs> bishop J.B. Thornton, God bless you, sir. We, we love you. Thank God for you and for your beautiful wife, amen, doing such an awesome, awesome job. And thank God, amen, for the family and to Elder Travis Isaac Thornton. God bless him in Jesus' name. He's a very faithful man of God. Oh, yeah, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings. I believe in acknowledging what the Lord is doing in our midst. Amen. Because this is the Lord's doing. And certainly it's marvelous in our eyes. And if it's not marvelous in your eyes, then I hate to say it, but there's nothing we can do about it. Because it's the Lord's doing. And no one can curse God's people. No one. You can ask Balak and Balaam and all of them, and he couldn't do it. Praise the Lord. They wanted to curse God's people, but couldn't do it. And he said, I can't curse what God has already blessed. <laughs> That's the scripture. That's Bible. I can't curse what God has already blessed. I dare you just, just look at somebody across the room and tell them, did you know you're blessed? And you that are at home watching, just type in, I know I'm blessed. Just open up your mouth one time real loud. Say, I know I'm blessed. That was, that was decent. That was pretty good. But 
but but but but open up your mouth one more time and just shout i know i'm blessed Got some pains in the body, but that ain't got nothing to do with me being blessed. Had some, had some downs in my life, but that ain't got nothing to do with me being blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble, but that don't mean we're not blessed. We are blessed. Praise the Lord. We're blessed. And so we honor all the precious people of God. Amen. In your respectable places, we love you. Thank you, praise and worship. Thank you, musicians, essential workers been doing a beautiful job over this past year we thank God for you to all ministry leaders we thank God for you thank God for your patience for your labor for those that work behind the scene to our financial team praise the Lord still operating and functioning praise the Lord there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see we honor you Praise the Lord. It takes labor, amen, to work the things out in the vineyard. And there are only a few laborers, but we thank God that God will supply. He has supplied, and he shall continue to supply. And if he doesn't supply, he'll give the ones that are there strength to continue until he adds to the kingdom. Isn't that beautiful? All right. And so we pray for laborers to come into the vineyard laborers with the right spirit and the right attitude praise the lord we don't want just any laborers we want to pray for the right laborers to come into the vineyard amen we don't want our jobs to be harder we want it to be a smoother ride if so possible all right to my wife god bless you we love you lady thornton bless you honey matthew 25 do you have your bibles open in case you didn't bring a Bible, you don't have a cell phone, you don't have a tablet, praise the Lord. But if you're next to somebody, amen, that you come with, they don't have one, please share. Praise the Lord. Share uh, with someone that is with you. Share with the children. Let them read the word of the Lord along with you. Amen. We want the word to fall on good ground. And it starts in moments like these. Matthew 25. And we'll begin at verse number 14. And by the grace of God, here we go. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one to every man according to his several ability straightway took his journey then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth, I'm reading from the King James Version, hid his Lord's money. After a long time, somebody say a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents, and behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy, thy Lord. 
Then he which had received the one talent, somebody say one, came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. Luke says that he is an austere man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth Lo, there hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slowful servant. Still was a servant, but he was wicked and slowful, but still was a servant. Still serving, but wicked and slowful. He says, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strolled. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he that shall have an abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath and cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth on the collaboration of the text let's talk for the next few godly minutes together on the subject the investment of the investor, the investment of the investor. God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor. Need you now. Cannot do this on our own. We need you to lead us and guide us. Need you to speak for us. Lord, as a servant, I now decrease. And I pray for your Holy Spirit to increase in me through me that your words may be alive and fall on good ground. Bring forth the harvest that you see fit according to the several lives that are here and those that are watching. We ask his blessings to be upon us all one by one and name by name and the most majestic name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray and we believe. We say amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of an all mighty king the investment of the investor the investment of the investor consequently precious people of lord we find here in our text today that being that we have the synoptic gospels they're synonymous speaking terms or terminologies, thoughts, or the perceptions of various ones that were there in the midst with the Lord, we find ourselves here in the Gospels today where Matthew kind of speaks very synonymously with what Luke talks about. He here calls these talents, but over in Luke, they call them pounds. There is really an attraction of the investor. I'll use that for station identification today. The investor is the main attraction in the story if the truth be told, while and yet we look at those that were invested into and what they did and maybe what they did not do. But they're not the main attraction of the story. Not at all. Because without the investor making his investments, those that were invested into and were to make a in greater investment from the investor would not have the ability to invest anything because they would have had nothing. Therefore, the scripture tells us that without him,
him who? Mr. Thornton, without him, without the Lord, without God, without the Father, without him, we can do what? Nothing. Thank you for the response. We can do nothing. Have we really taken time? I'm going to get here, but have we really sometimes slowed down and really thought to our own selves when we woke up? And our feet hit the floor. My foot, feet hit the floor this morning and I slid out the bed and because my bed sits up a little higher. And when my feet hit the floor, normally in the mornings, I can kind of feel the aches at the bottom of my feet. But today, when my feet hit the floor, I kind of had a little bounce in my step. And I, I, I said, Lord, you, you're good. Now, somebody say, well, as young as you are, you should have a bounce. I don't feel bounce every time because I'm on my knees. I, I, I work with my legs all the time. And so there are days that, uh, and then from an accident I had over 20, well, roughly about, about 20 years ago, uh, uh, my knees had got messed up, got cortisone shots, so forth and so on. And since then, uh, my knees haven't been the same. But I'll be honest with you, since asking the saints to pray for my knees I'm gonna be honest with you my knees have been feeling better and since doing a little more exercise tell somebody we need to be mobile we need to be exercising that means sometimes you got to get out take a walk take a jog get by you a jump rope from Walmart I'm talking to somebody you can be slim and still be out of shape because you're low in weight don't mean that you're in shape. Because if I take you around the block three times and you huffing, but you only weigh, you only weigh 100 pounds soaking wet, that, that, that means you're out of shape. Tell somebody, we need cardio. You need to take care of yourself. Praise the Lord. And I know the Bible says that uh, um, exercise, godly, godly exercise, uh, profitive, but uh, uh, exercise profit of little. Some of y'all, y'all with me. And so exercise, and so what the preachers try to do is do the vis-a-vis -vis or vis-a-vis, -vis, the comparison, uh, contrast between godly exercising and health exercising. It says, well, you don't need to exercise, and that's why uh, the preachers are about 300 pounds because he's eating every chicken box that he can find himself and every ounce of grease, praise the Lord. And so we think that that's the way it's supposed to be. But, 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 but even in Leviticus, God gave them a diet. Somebody say diet. Now I'll admit my diet ain't the best, but I don't go crazy either. Praise the Lord. And so, and so you got to learn how to be modest in everything. Here a little, there a little. You can't eat steak every week. You need some, you need some, you need some vegetables. Green vegetables, as they would say, and fresh is better versus canned. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, and so I know you didn't come for the diet lesson today, so let me get back to my text. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we need to be healthier. Praise the Lord. We can we can have a little extension on our life if we, if we treat our bodies, the temple of the Holy Ghost, a little bit better. Clap your hands if you believe it. A little bit better. A little bit, just a little bit better. Drink some more water. A little bit better. Less carbonated drinks. Do a little bit better. Back up off the Pepsi and the soda. A little bit better. I used to ask my godmother, Mother Garnett, because she hated water. I used to say, Mother, you, you drinking your water, baby? And she would say, you, you know, Mother could talk smart when she got ready. She'd look at you, make it out of my face. <laughs> I don't want no water. <laughs> mother wanted that Pepsi. Glory be to God. But as she got older, Mother, the more was rehearsed to her, she started drinking more water. We got to do a little bit better. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we find here that that, that, that in Matthew, 
uh, we find here that the text says, and let's get right into it by the grace of God, that we have uh, the kingdom of heaven. He says, is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And so he's going into a far country and going to deliver these talents, but he's going there and going to give them these gifts gives one five, gives one two, gives another one one, according to verse 15. And the scripture says, and straightway, somebody say straightway, he took his journey. Now, from the correlation of what we've already read, and, and I need to jump down to only jump back up to help us to understand that in this, in this journey, when he left, he was going for a long time. He was going to be what I'll use today as a term. There was going to be a delay in his return. When he gives this delay in his return, he's giving them time and he's giving them opportunity. Everybody repeat after me and say time and opportunity. So God is giving, this investor is giving them time and giving them opportunity to work things out, to get it together. He's giving them time to make the appropriate investments so that there can be a return on what he invested into them. He is not giving out anything for naught. No. He is an investor. No investors is just going to just uh, sporadically just give you money and don't look for anything in return. They're going to give you something. You'll get a piece of the pie. But they want an investment. Mm. They want a return profit on what they instilled and what they invested. So he says here, he gives them time and he gives them opportunity. He takes this long journey and we understand to truly to invest really means to commit to, 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 to commit in order to earn something in return. Thank you, Holy Ghost. To commit in order to return, to earn something in return. To invest is to make use for future benefits. Tell somebody, God got some benefits for you. To invest is to make use of for future benefits. You don't invest money. You don't invest money into stock not to get any kind of benefits later on in life. An investment is for us to have future benefits. Watch this. Benefits for what? Ultimately, the benefits are there for us to live better. The benefits are there for us to live a better lifestyle. Mm, 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 mm. I, I want to jump, but I'm trying not to jump ahead of myself. <laughs> Glory be to God. I get too happy sometimes. Uh, but, but, but God, when he invests in us, he wants us to be able to take this time and this opportunity to invest appropriately. Mm. So that means we got to work through this. We got to really put some time in. Scripture says to us, work out our soul salvation with fear and with trembling. Work out. So when you work out anything, if it's physically you work out, if it's spiritually that you're working, it's, it's laborious. It's a task that's at hand. And oftentimes it may not be the easiest thing. And there, there are sometimes, watch this track with me this morning, there are sometimes that in the midst of us working out, 
there are some workouts that we enjoy better than others. I, I, I know physically for me, if I'm going to physically work out, I love, which are the hardest things for me to grow in my body, but I love working legs. Most people in the gym, they choose Monday because they're fresh to be chest day. You see everybody doing chest, They're chest, arms, shoulders. Everybody want to look good up top, but don't nobody want to work the foundation. The foundation is important because if you don't have no foundation, you can't stand. <laughs> Talk, Thornton. So, so one, of the, one of the greatest workouts that I love personally is legs. Secondly, chest. But the least of them all for me is arms. I hate doing arms. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if you can see the mug on my face right now, but I hate it with a passion. I hate it. I just hate doing arms. For some reason, it get on my nerves. I hate doing arms. I can't stand it. But to be complete, you got to work on it. Come on. Tell somebody to be complete, I got to work on everything. So even the things that come that I don't like, there's still a mandate and an edict for me to do it. To work it out. Work out your soul salvation. Sometimes I don't want to speak to people that don't want to speak to me. Sometimes I don't want to pray for folks that's been ignorant. Sometimes I don't want to go to church and happen to see three or four hypocrites that really don't love the Lord but have been talking about everybody. Y'all ain't going to talk to me, but I know I'm running down the right road. And so there's some times in my life that there's some things that I find to be a challenge. But that's why he told me to work it out. And you work it out with fear. In other words, when you work it out with fear, it's not that you are, it, it, it's, it's not the fearful kind of fear, but it's with reverence. So God, God will allow us to work some things out because I simply revere him. When I reverence God, there are some things that I'm going to do just because God commanded me to do. Do it. It's not because it's so joyous to do. It's not because I'm so good and I just want to do it. But I do it because God commanded me to do it. And when I strive to do it under the auspices of his power, then God kind of alleviates the stress of it and allows it to have a better flow. Just, just wave at somebody and tell them I'm working on me. Yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in a serious workout right now. And so I got to make sure that I do this full spiritual workout because I got to make sure, Sister Betty, that heaven is my home. I, I, I didn't come, I didn't come this far, hallelujah, to, to, to not make heaven my home. I did not leave the streets. I did not leave the clubs. I did not leave, hallelujah, running around and doing at times what I wanted to do to not make heaven. Glory be to God. I've come too far. I've given up too much. And there's some of you that are here today that can testify that you have given up too much so far to turn back around. And so I want to tell you to go, you might as well continue to go forward because to go forward or to go backwards rather is just as far to go backwards as it is to go forward. So you might as well just make up your mind and say, I'm going to go forward. Just, just yell out, yell out today. I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I, I've come too far. I've given up too much. I've I've, 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 I've had some, some low days and some, I've had some highs, but, 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 but I've been through too much to turn 
back now. And if I turn back now, I've got just as far to go. Hallelujah. When I can just decide that I'm going to make heaven my home and I'm going to commit my ways unto him. Hallelujah. Like the scripture says, when I commit my ways unto him, God will satisfy and God will bless me. And so it's here as we move uh, expeditiously by his grace. He says, he says, and he gave these people talents. It was three of them. This investor takes time and he gives this talents and the talents that he gave, uh, bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah, was, was when you look historically, it was known, hallelujah, as Greek coins, Greek coins that had an equivalent of 6,000 days, an equivalent, I need you to listen to this historically, it was equivalent to 6,000 days or about 20 years of wages, that's heavy, so if I was to do roughly 20 years of wages for the first, he gave him almost 100 years of wages to invest, to the next one, he gave him roughly about 40 years of wages to invest and to the other one he gave him about 20 years of wages to invest now he gives to each one liberally but he gives uh, how he gives diametrically different according to what you can handle and so in other words if you have some people will say 30 60 100 fold but if you have given 30 if God gave you 30 the one that has 100 is not greater than you uh, if you have 30 you still have 100 are y'all with me if you have 60 that's still your 100 if you have 100 you still have 100 what God is really saying is I have blessed those that can handle it and that will do accordingly to what they are supposed to do that's why the scripture says where much is given much is required and God will not give but so much to some people because they will not be totally committed or faithful to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why some people say, well, and some people wonder why some people are being blessed and why some people got this and why some people got that because some people truly are go-getters. Some people are not waiting for everything to be uh, dropped in their lap, but then there are some people that will go out and drag it in glory be to God that's why I told one of my sons I said I, I, I said it's all right so if you got to work at McDonald's for a season it's all right if you got to flip some burgers it's all right if you got to stand at, at Wendy's and take some orders why well, and some people say I don't want to work I don't want to work that job but 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 you don't know what door of opportunity God will open when we humble ourselves through what looks like a meager door sometimes you sometimes you sometimes we are forced through responsibility to take a lower or a meager wage and sometimes you got to add a second job on top of that to make ends meet to make things happen but when you got responsibility you do things that sometimes you don't want to do but you do them to get by hallelujah and God will supply but you don't know what door of opportunity that God will open next when you take the responsibility of something that looks like it's beneath you Sometimes the, the boss will give you a job and offer you a job that is beneath you. But sometimes God is setting you up for to take you a little lower. Watch this in humility. And when you become when you become grounded there, God is just setting you up to elevate us. Huh? He said, if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he said, in due 
time, due time, due time, due time, his time, due time, he will exalt us, not on our time, not on, not on our schedule, not, 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 not in our time frame, but in his time, when he sees fit, when he knows that we are ready, because sometimes we think that we're ready. I learned that lesson in something a long time ago. I thought I was ready. I told you a few weeks ago, I thought I was ready, but I was not ready. Hallelujah. I found out that five years later, praise the Lord, I was scuffling to still be ready. Glory be to God. But God blessed me. Hey, glory. And you grow in grace. Tell somebody, get ready. Get ready for your next level of blessings. Yeah, y'all ain't say that right. Hallelujah. Come on, work with me. I'm, uh, I'm coming, I promise you. Hallelujah. Don't fall asleep just yet. Hallelujah. Ah, the miracle is on the way. Hallelujah. Tell somebody. Hallelujah. Be faithful over the little. Be faithful over the little. Ah, for though thy beginning be small, yet thy latter end shall greatly in crease yes yeah, so 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 he takes his time and he gives them time and opportunity to work out uh, these investments when he comes back for them uh, because he's coming back for uh, an investment he wants he wants some usury he wants he wants a profit mm, hallelujah oh he wants a profit on his investment Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. And so he says here, he says, he says, then he that have received the five and they traded the same and made other five talents. So he invested. Somebody say he invested. He says, likewise, he that had received two also gained another two. So he invested. Hallelujah. He says, but he that had received the one went and he dug it and he digged in the earth and he stored up his Lord's money. He says, after a long time, talked about this time and this opportunity. He says that the servants come and begin to reckon with him. Mm -hmm. And he says, his Lord said unto him, hallelujah, that had sold the five talents and added unto the five, another five. He, he doubled up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doubled up. He, he didn't just sit on his blessings, but he doubled up. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to dig deep to double up. Glory be to God. He doubled up on his profit. Mm -hmm. He made the investor happy. Yes. He says here, he says, because you made me so happy. Hallelujah. That I'm not going to leave you without a reward. I'm going to give you something that I didn't even tell you about from the beginning. I'm talking about the investor here. I'm going to give you something. I didn't explain to you what you were going to get in the beginning. I just told you to go and invest. But, but now I want you to, because you've been faithful over a few things. Woo! I feel it, Brother E. You've been faithful over a few things. Somebody just shout few things. Yeah. I, I love that he said a few things because if he would have said you've been faithful over everything, then 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 that would keep me out of the picture. That would that would automatically scoop me. I'm talking about me. That that would scoop me right on out the picture. And I I know me. I haven't been faithful over everything. Glory be to God. But what I can testify today, and I don't need nobody's help, I can testify that Lord, I know this one thing. I've been faithful over a few things. Glory be to God. And the things that I have not, hallelujah, totally been faithful over, God, hallelujah, when we practice repentance, woo, hallelujah, God will count us worthy. Hallelujah. He tells him, because you've been faithful, he says, I want you to enter now into the joy of the Lord. He says, because you've been, you've been good. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And the Bible says in verse 22, and he also that have received two talents, he says, these two talents, he came and said, Lord, he says, thou deliverest unto me two talents. He says, behold, I have gained another two talents. And he says, beside them, and his Lord said unto him, well done. Mm. 
He says, and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Hallelujah. He says to him also that only had the two. He said the two, but he doubled up. Tell somebody he doubled up. He didn't have as much as the first one, mother. Ah, but he, 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 he doubled up what God had given him, what the Lord, what the servant, hallelujah, what the investor had given him. He doubled up. Tell somebody, I got to double up. Yeah. So I mean, I got some work to do. I got to work. I got to work it. 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 Hallelujah. Some of us trying to take too many vacations. We got to work on this investment. Mm -hmm. You got to take some time out. You, you've been vacating a whole long time. How many, how long are you going to vacate? Glory be to God. You got to work on this investment. Meant. Glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And investment is greater. Woo, this investment is greater than just coming to the tabernacle. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory be to God because we're getting ready to work on something here and in this next one that I really want to get to. And then we're going to prepare to launch out into the deep. He says here in verse number 24 then he said which he had received the one talent he came and said Lord I knew that thou was an hard man Luke says that he was an austere man mm -hmm. in other words he was he was a man of of seriousness he he was he was a man hallelujah that he knew didn't play games and he says here I, I, I knew that you were uh, you were hard you were rough glory reaping where you didn't even sow and, and, and gathering where thou has not strawed and he says and I was afraid listen to these excuses mm. can we talk for a few minutes I, I, I know Pentecostal folks they want you to holler all the time but can we talk for a few minutes hey, listen to all of these excuses that was your hard man. You, you, you reaping where you didn't even sow. Now you're going to tell him about, he's the investor. Now you want to be smart. Now, hallelujah. He says, you reaping where you didn't sow and gathering where thou hast not sown. You can tell him all about his business, but you didn't take care of your own business. Mm. He says, and I was afraid and went and hid the talent in the earth. Lo, thou hast, thou hast, thou hast that is thine. He, his Lord answered and said unto him, after he gave him back the one talent, he says, thou wicked and slowful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. He says, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges and then at my coming I should have received my own usury. He says, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. He now is saying to go back and to give it to the one that really was going to put it to use. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God God wants, ah, the investor wanted somebody to be resourceful with the resources. What good, what good is it, hallelujah, to have resources but you ain't going to use it? What, let me help somebody today. What good is making money but you ain't going to spend none? What, what good is it? Hallelujah. You got, you got thousands and thousands of dollars, but you haven't sought no kind of investments. Glory be to God. Oh, you got you to gotta live more than just in houses and cars. Praise the Lord. You got to make the appropriate investments. Glory be to God. Ah, and cars is not it. A house is a greater investment by a long shot. That's what bothers me about some of our black communities today. We've learned the wrong lessons. We'll ride around in a Bentley coupe or a four-door ES. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about you, brother. I know you got it. ES 350. Hallelujah. We'll ride around in a GS 350. You'll ride around in a G90 2021. And you're riding good. The leather smells good. You got an LS 460L. Hallelujah. Buttons in the back that you hit the button. It can recline. Mm, mm. 
and you feel good while you're rolling down the street because you just got it cleaned up. You got armor all on the tires. Hallelujah. You got the smell good. That's the little trees that hang from the, from the rear view mirror. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We call them smell goods. Hallelujah. It makes the aroma in your car to have an effect that while you're driving because you just got it clean now all of a sudden you feel like the car rides better than what it has ever ridden before. Hallelujah. But you live, you live, you live, you live, you live, you live in somewhere that you can't even park it. You live where you got to park it down the street because there are so many people in the complex that you don't live in an appropriate place. Hallelujah. Before, hallelujah, you buy the niceties of life, you ought to have be able to have the contents to be able to hold it. In other words, if you're going to really buy a super nice car, have a nice house to pull up to. Hallelujah. I had to learn some things the hard way when I was first, when I first got married, Deacon Dingle. I can testify. I'm coming to the text and we're about to close. I remember as a young man that I was buying suits because I was hanging out with my grandfather all the time and I wanted to buy suits and buy nice, buy nice shoes. And, but I was freshly married and, and, and we was working on a very low budget and low income hallelujah but my grandfather showed me how to go out and get good deals and, and be able to get the good material and still have something nice but you didn't pay astronomical numbers for it hallelujah and so he taught me how to be a hustler hallelujah in a saved way come on talk back to me one of my uncles called him a black Jew uh huh you know Jewish people can be kind of tight you know they gonna spend where it need to be spent but 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 they get things done hallelujah Hallelujah. So I learned a lesson from him. Hallelujah. But I was spending too much money putting name brand stuff on my back and putting name brand pants on my backside and polo on my neck, around my neck and trying to wear this and trying to wear that. But my, when I came into the house, my wife said, I, I want some, I want a chandelier. Uh, but I said, I can't afford the chandelier. But then my wife said, well, if you stop buying all them suits and you stop buying all them shirts and all them clothes putting on your back, then we can fix up the house but then I thought to myself well wow, my wife taught me a lesson early on that my house is my greatest investment hallelujah what you put on the inside I'm going somewhere y'all miss what I really was trying to say some of y'all miss what I was really trying to say what you put on the inside <laughs> is greater than what you put on the outside <laughs> but if you fix up the inside right woo, before you know it it's automatic the outside gonna start to shape up all by thyself glory be to God hallelujah and so I had to learn the hard way to make the appropriate investments and stop, stop putting the cart before the horse but allow the horse to gently and ever so smoothly to pull the cart in its appropriate direction hallelujah and when you do things God's way hallelujah you make one investment and Lord God begin to just open up a door I took that investment hallelujah I listened hallelujah from the experience of my grandfather he told me son when you buy your house hallelujah because I said I'm going to get an apartment I said we don't have no house money I just had got a job was in Texas praise the Lord getting some training and 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 and, and my wife called called me was wasn't weren't married at the time but we were just about to get married and she said the loan went through for the house I said oh glory be to God and that's a testimony all by itself because I had no job I had no money I only had a thousand dollars down for the house but God made a way I said God no education God made the way you you gotta stop trying to make the way and let God make the way if you do it God's way God will make the way sweet I told my grandfather I'm just gonna get an apartment can't afford no house he said well the same price you're gonna pay for an apartment you could pay for a house but then you'll have a house in the long run and I said well, okay well let's look into it and so we started looking into hood homes and got the house praise the Lord and God bless opened up the door bought the house praise the Lord with only one thousand dollars down praise the Lord bought the house and the mortgage was the same price as rent 
Yeah. Stayed there. Stayed there. And I told my wife, I told my wife, in ignorance, not arrogance, in ignorance. That's a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding. I said, in five years, we're going to sell this house and we're going to move out to the county. Well, five years went and five more years went and five more years went and almost another five more. That means almost 20 years. I looked up 18 and a half years. We were still in the same house. Hallelujah. But my grandfather told me, son, never take out any money off of your house. He says, you don't have to take out any money. He says, just keep paying on it. Just keep paying on it. He says, don't, don't refinance. Don't take out all that money because then you're starting the loan all over again. That's wisdom. Thank you, Bishop JB. You taught me some wisdom. Hallelujah. Took that money and dumped that money into the new house. Hallelujah. Every dime dumped it right back into the new house and now sitting on what we know as equity. Hallelujah. That's called, that's called learning some business techniques that you can gather and you can go further and now you have something that potentially that your children can get or your children children can get if God's tarry and they don't have nothing to pay for. You know why? Because it's paid in full. Yeah. You can live. I, I'm looking at some folks I know right now that house is paid off, been paid off. And hallelujah, you're sitting on an investment. Glory be to God. And that investment makes you money. Glory, hallelujah. It's, it's all right, hallelujah. And that's what God wants. God wants his people to have wisdom. Hallelujah. God wants his people, hallelujah, to not always struggle. Hallelujah. And have uh, no stability but God wants us to be stable hallelujah God wants us to have stability in him but you gotta grow in it you gotta grow in it don't think that it's gonna happen overnight it's here a little and there a little you can't try to get into these get rich schemes and get rich schematics because we ain't getting rich overnight Lord fact of the matter is I'm not even looking to be rich but God if you bless me enough hallelujah ah if I can be blessed enough to be well off I don't need to be rich I don't even need to be that wealthy hallelujah but if I can just be well off God can make your well off look like you're wealthy he can make wealthy look like you're rich because when God adds to it because the blessings of the Lord I said the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it hallelujah you ain't got to stress over this one tell somebody God's working it out for you hallelujah here we go now here we go and so he says to this one he says listen I've given you time and you brought me nothing hallelujah he says that uh, you should have leaf put this money to the exchanges and then he says listen hallelujah to make me some more profit hallelujah you knew that I was coming back but what did you do with my investment what did you do what did you do with my investment he says he took the talent from the one and he gave it to the one hallelujah that he first said had five but he doubled it up and now he had ten so he says I'll take it from the one and I'll give it to the one that had ten for the one that will stay busy for the one that will operate and function in my will and do what I asked them to do they're going to do my will God is looking for somebody to fulfill his will not for somebody to take up space oh Oh, no, 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 no. He wants somebody to do what he has called them to do. Hallelujah. Ah, look over at somebody and tell them do what you've been called to do. Look back at somebody and tell them do what you've been called to do. He says, uh, and the scripture text tells us, not here, but the scripture tells us, uh, he says, I'll take it from you. He says, and I'll give it to your brother that was better than you in the first place. And so when we waste time, when we waste time wow, with the investment, when we don't put the investment to work, Work. In other words, hallelujah, these investments is more than just money, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Uh, we're getting ready to get to the crux of the text now, to the theological essence of the story. Uh, this investment is greater than just money. Hallelujah. Uh, sometimes the investment really is the gifts, really is the talents. It really is the blessings that God has bestowed upon the people of God. Hallelujah. And so uh, this investor here, praise the Lord, is uh, hallelujah. They give him no name, but Jesus is talking through this parable of this investor. But while Jesus is talking, he's really speaking from the angle of fathership. Hallelujah. He's really speaking from the angle of being God. Hallelujah. Because sometimes Jesus, when he would speak, he would speak from the angle of son. Sometimes when he would speak, he would speak from the angle of servant. But then there were times that when he would speak, when he said, when you see me, you see my father. Hallelujah. And my father is in me and I am in the father and me and the father, we are one. Yes. Hallelujah. There's not a trinity. There's not a triune God. Don't get it twisted. But here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That's for my, that's for my Pentecostal family. I want to let you know we still believe in the oneness of God. There's not three gods. There's only one. Yes. Ooh, hallelujah. And he says here now, hallelujah. He says about this investor and when he's speaking now from the aspect of fathership, he's really speaking in the parable about himself. Ah, but somebody, hallelujah, ah, you may not understand ah, the name of this investor. Glory be to God. The name of this investor that I'm talking about this morning, he had multiple names. Ah, some, hallelujah, according to Hebrews 5, he's the author of eternal salvation. Ah, according to Revelations 22, he says I am the root and I'm the offspring of David even in Revelations 22 he says I am the bright and I am the morning star uh, there's somebody that may understand this investor as the rock hallelujah that the builders rejected uh, somebody may know this investor as the rock in the weary land hallelujah somebody may know this investor as being the chief cornerstone uh, somebody knows uh, this investor as to be the lion of Judah hallelujah somebody knows him in Isaiah 9 and when it says unto us a child is born a son is given when was the son given he was given on the cross thank you Bishop JB uh, hallelujah he was given on the cross but Isaiah said that this investor name was wonderful uh, it says his name is counselor uh, his best name is mighty God uh, the same investor uh, his name is everlasting hallelujah let me back up here now uh, because it doesn't say mighty God uh, but it says the mighty God uh, the Holy Ghost stopped me last night uh, and I said mighty God and the Holy Spirit said look back at it uh, I look back at it and it said the mighty God uh, because there may be some mighty gods in the world uh, but he is the mighty God uh, hallelujah and he is the everlasting father uh, and he is the prince of peace our song of Solomon picked it up and says in chapter 2 he says I am the rose of Sharon I am the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon really symbolizes love beauty and healing revelation 17 and verse 14 it says that this investor had a name called the lamb of God it also was in revelation 17 that he was the Lord of Lords. It is also in Revelation 17 that he was the King of Kings and those that are with him are called, chosen and faithful. I said those that are with the King are called, 
chosen and faithful. And when God gives hallelujah, uh, that's why I wanted you to understand the name of the investor. And somebody says, well, you still haven't called his name. Well, for those that are apostolic like me, uh, he says that they shall have a son and he shall be called Emmanuel. Interpret it. Hallelujah. He is with us. His name shall be called Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Christ because he is the anointed one. Hallelujah to God. And so in case you didn't get that he was the bright and morning star, the everlasting father, I need you to understand that the parable is speaking about Jesus. Hallelujah to God. And he told them to occupy until he comes that's what the text said occupy till I come in other words I want you to put your mind and your energy into something that's going to bring you an everlasting reward occupy till I come that don't mean just sit down and do nothing and twiddle your thumbs and play on the cell phone and let me play a video game no you can have some natural fun hallelujah in the natural yes you can but there's times in your life that you gotta take some real time out with the Lord hallelujah to God that's why he said now there's a time for some rest but then there's a time to get ready to fight the battle he told the disciples come now we've been doing ministry we untold all the day long we've been flowing in ministry uh, and when you really flow in ministry uh, uh, the flow of ministry can wear you out uh, because don't you know that this is a warfare uh, this is a demonic warfare that we are fighting uh, against principalities and powers uh, hallelujah sorcery witchcraft uh, soothsayers uh, you got to be able to rebuke some stuff uh, you hear what I said sister Adrian uh, you got to be able to take this investment uh, that God put down on the inside of you uh, hallelujah to God uh, and that's where I got to get ready to close uh, and say good night uh, united uh, I got to leave you now uh, but before I go home uh, I want to tell somebody uh, that the greatest investment that God was talking about uh, it was not money uh, but the investment he was talking about uh, what you going to do uh, with the Holy Ghost he said in Genesis he says I blow the breath of life in you the Ruach and Adam became a living soul but now that you are alive I don't need you to just live I need you to live I don't want you just to exist I want you to live I want you to get up from where you are that's why the Bible says he'll give the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. I haven't always obeyed in everything. But God knows at the end of the day. I want to do his will and there's somebody that is here this morning there's somebody at home you want to do God's will I stopped by this morning to tell somebody to wake up arise from where you are and give God praise that God gave you the earnest of his spirit when God gave you the Holy Ghost that's why Jesus took time to talk to Nicodemus in John around chapter 4 and said look at here except the man is born of water and 
wind of spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God Nicodemus was confused must I enter into my mother's womb the second time Jesus responded again except the man is born again of water and spirit he can't even see the kingdom of God I want to tell somebody when God saves you you ain't got to wait to get to the kingdom to give him glory you're already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus what do you mean that's why I told everybody I said how are you doing Bishop I said I'm super blessed I'm doing so good it don't make no sense what do you mean I ain't talking about money I'm not talking about I ain't got no problems I just told you I had aches and pains in my body but it's a mindset I'm super blessed I ain't trying to be super deep I'm just talking real talk I feel good hallelujah to God because I'm committing my ways unto the Lord I'm learning how to walk right I'm learning how to forgive better I'm learning how to pay my tithes better I'm learning how to serve God better I'm learning how to check on the people of God I'm learning to not be self-indulged but to love everybody regardless of what you look like hallelujah to God I want to be a blessing while I'm alive and while I'm doing well and so the investment of the investor when he comes back he's got a question what did you do with the spirit of God that I gave you what did you do with the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is more than speaking in tongues in an unknown language the Holy Ghost is greater than Shandiri Andobo Shata Rindiri Asate Kemea Rusu Komoshaya is greater Shata Kande Rusun Basha in the Mamande Kase is greater than an unknown language I'm trying to get through this but when God fills you with the Holy Ghost the Bible said after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you ye shall ye shall have power power to tread on serpents, power to tread on scorpions, power over all the power of the enemy. Is there anybody that's got power? Got power, shout power. Give them praise, give them glory, give them praise, give them glory. If you want the Holy Ghost, lift up your hands and say, Lord, give me power. If you need the Holy Ghost, shout power. I need the investment. I need the investment. I need the investment. I need the investment. Pour it on me right now. Pour it on me right now. Your mother can't give it to you. Your father can't give it to you. But only Jesus, the King of Kings, the Prince, hallelujah, can give it to you. God wants to fill you. Come on, clap your hands right there. Come on, clap your hands right there. Come on, worship 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 right there. Come on, give him glory right there. He didn't give you all that Holy Ghost for you to do nothing. God wants an investment. 
He wants a return on his investment. So, so when he gives you this power, the power, the scripture says, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So when we get the mind of Christ with the spirit of Christ down on the inside, oh my shate. He says, out of your belly, he shate, shall flow rivers of living water. Woo! Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You may have a dead season but there ain't nothing dead about the Holy Ghost you may have a season where stuff is dead around you but the Holy Ghost is never dead because God is alive and when you got Jesus down on the inside scripture talks about he says whose fan is in his hand. So sometimes, what do you need a fan for? Whose fan is in his hand. I'll give you the Holy Ghost and, and what? I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and, and fire. So when the fire, in the old days, when the fire was starting to dwindle, from the stove they would take the fan and begin to pump the fan and the air from the fan will begin to circulate woo, up around and underneath the coals so that it could reignite to another level but when the fire would reignite they then would put more wood on top of the fire so that it could keep on burning but it would burn hotter than what it just was previously so in other words we ought to be able to burn greater in year 15 than we did in year 10 somebody ain't gonna talk to me I must got the wrong church but there's anybody here that you're greater in your fire than what you was in year one I'm in year five but I'm stronger now than what I was when I first got saved somebody say well Bishop you don't know what I've been going through and the and, 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 and the trouble's been taking me out. Well, you got to be careful because then you fall on the ground of where it talks about how do there's four categories of ground and there's only one ground that means anything. One ground is the ground that's going to see Jesus. And that's one that fall on good ground and bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. But then there was other grounds that were snuffed out by thistles and thorns. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's a heart condition. Glory be to God. That's what it's really talking about when a stone falls on the ground. See, a lot of times we talk about the seed but oftentimes we don't talk enough about the soil we we put emphasis on the seed the seed the seed the seed you got to sow a seed the seed well what about the soil because I can go buy a brand new bag of scotch plus two with fertilizer and put it down but if the soil ain't conditioned when the sun comes up it's going to scorch it and burn it and it'll wither away and that's what we're seeing right now well people they're not they're not rooted they're not rooted in him. You got to get a root. In other words, that means you got to take some time to dig deep. You got to take some time out. Hallelujah. I used to think that it was our fault. Now the word of God is preached. And at the end of the day, when you get the word, when you leave 
life here you gotta take time out for your own life hallelujah nobody's gonna call you day after day day after day and check on you you gotta be able to take the investment and grow thereby grow in grace tell somebody are you growing are you growing grow in grow in grace and when I grow in grace I can prove my growth by my fruit yes, sir. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place I grow I can prove the growth by my fruit not by my tongues tongues don't Paul said I speak in more tongues than y'all but if I have not love I'm as a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal I'm just making a bunch of racket and if I have not love So, so what you can speak in tongues? Big deal. Got it. You ain't the only one speaking in tongues. God gifted all of us if you got saved. Everybody may not have the gift of tongues. But if God saved you, you got it with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God gave utterance. Praise the Lord. But the tongues... Is something that automatically comes when you get the Spirit. But how you really know that you're operating in the Spirit is when you see the manifestation of love. So, that means not just loving the saints. I'll be honest with you, Bishop. I've learned... After 20 years of marriage, I've learned and I'm learning how to even speak more kind to my wife. Stuff, stuff that used to upset us don't even upset us like that no more. It, 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 it's, it's like, yeah, okay, I got it. Then I'll do things on purpose just to make it better. It's the spirit of God. It's the growth. Now, some people say, oh, I, I, it's, it's, it, you see, you don't know what folks' lifestyle is like. Because I don't try to put on no, no blast before everybody. So I ain't got to be huggy-duggy and honky-dory and loving all up on her. And, you know, the church ain't for bumping and grinding. I don't see nothing wrong. All right, I, I'm still saved. All right, so so there's a time and a season for everything, but 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 you grow in this thing, and so you ought to be able to see the manifestation even in your tone. How do you deal with people on your job? Oh, I ain't gonna let them talk to me any kind of way. Let me tell you something. You're a child of God. You ain't gotta talk like that. A child of God. A child. Let me tell you something. This is a true scenario. I got into, I got into a, a situation with a gentleman just not long ago, and, 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 and he was making a big fuss about something. And so I asked this gentleman, what would, you, what would you like for me to do? Now, that ain't the Chad I used to know. I knew my, well, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I thought was right. But I asked him, what would you like me to do? He wanted me to move back down to this other section. So what I did, I took my workload and I moved back down this other section. You know what happened? The gentleman came to me and said, thank you. And I said to him, and I put my hand on his shoulder because it, 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 it could have become a big altercation. I said, I want you to know this. I'm a man of peace. At the end of the day, I said, there are times I do get in my feelings, but if you get to know me, I promise you, because I'm saved, I'm going to come back and get it right. Because I'm saved, 
I don't need nobody to say, well, you, you, I don't need, you can't speak for me. I'm talking about me. I will come back. So I ain't going back. No, you better go back because it's not about them. It's about you. You give people power over you and hold you back from the kingdom. Because if God said you don't forgive, then, then he, says, he says, I don't forgive. I don't forgive you. So we do things with heaven in mind. That's a part of our working out our soul salvation. I said, I'm a man of peace. I said, I want to work this out. I said, we can get along. We brothers. He said, that's what he, they, 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 they don't even know the title is bishop, but that's what they call me, bishop. They think my name is bishop. He said, bishop, they think, I'm serious, they think my name is bishop. Because the other her father called me bishop. He said, bishop, you all right with me. He's African. You all right with me, my brother. You all right with me, my brother. Give him that. It takes the Holy Ghost to dwell with people. All nationalities, all kindreds, all tongues. Doesn't matter. There's times in our life that we're not always right. Can we admit that? We're not always right. And we have to be able to acknowledge our wrongs. God bless you. The investment of the investor. Don't allow God to waste good oil and we don't multiply it. Use it. Make it worth its weight. In Jesus' name. He's poured too much into us for us to live a raggedy life. God did not call us to live a raggedy life. He called us to be his chosen people. That's something so unique and so special. To be called by his name. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray and we're going to get out of here. Will you rest upon your feet? Thank you, Jesus. We're going to the throne of grace. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I want to do something just slightly different today. And everybody may not understand it, but that's all right. But everybody's not in the same position. In case there's one here today that you want prayer. I want to lay hands on you today. I know you have a mask. I have a mask. If you desire prayer, I'm going to pray with you and for you today. We're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to lay hands on you. I'm going to get Elder Travis to come in to do this prayer while I come and do this prayer here on the floor today in the name of Jesus. So while he's praying, we're going to pray together. We're going to touch and we're going to agree. We're going to believe God for a miracle. Perhaps, possibly you're standing proxy in the place of somebody today, a family member that needs prayer. I want to pray with you. The Lord laid this on my heart last night, and I told the Lord I would do it. It almost slipped my mind, but I said, Lord, I'm going to do your will, regardless of what some think, how things look. My faith looks, looks up, looks to the hills from whence cometh my help. I know all of our help comes from the Lord. And while we're all going to pray today, I want you to believe. Believe in what you need prayer for. I'm not going to pray a long prayer, but I'm going to pray a prayer of belief with you. As we touch and as we agree, is that all right? We're going to touch and we're going to agree in the name of Jesus. I'm just going to lay my hands on your head in the name of Jesus Christ.
Father, again, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the power and the healing that's in the atmosphere. We thank you for your glory overshadowing us. We thank you, Lord God, that we can come to the throne of grace in the time of need. And so we come, Lord God, as broken vessels, looking to you by faith to make us whole and entire. We thank you, Lord Jesus, God Almighty, for you are the answer, you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Bless, Lord God, and touch every soul in the house. Those who have come, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, you have lands laid on them that you would touch them tremendously. And we who stand around, I pray in the name of the Lord. God, you know our heart. You know our intent. You know what we have need of. Before we even ask, you know our thoughts are far off. You know what miracle we need. You know what breakthrough we need. You know, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, the things that we need that we can't even say aloud. But God Almighty, you cover us in the name of Jesus. We look to you, Lord, because without you, we can do absolutely nothing. Bless us here and those that are at home. Lord God, make us to see in the name of the Lord that we can have victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you are the mediator between God and man. We put our trust in you. We put our faith in you. We put our joy in you. Oh God, we lay it on the line in the name of the Lord. Help us to believe when our faith is low. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would encourage our faith today. Bless our family members that are not here. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you allow your spirit in the prayers of the righteous to reach them where they are. Whether, Lord God, they're at work or whether they're on a bed of affliction, touch them right now in the name of the Lord. If it be your will, heal them and perform a miracle in the name of the Lord. Our family members, those that have gone wayward, Lord God, I pray that you call them once more time. Call them again in the name of the Lord and renew their strength. Help them, Lord God, in their mind and in their faith that there's only one way. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. I ask and pray that you will renew our joy, renew our strength. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that is not about the hype. It's not about the pump. It's not about our name in life, but it's about our names written in the Lamb's book of life. Help us to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Oh God, we thank you. We ask and pray for those in back spirit that you touch. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us to do it by faith. In the name of the Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're gonna do. We thank you for revival in our soul. We thank you for revisiting our soul. We thank you for the visitation. Hallelujah. We thank you that you called us by name. Glory be to God. I thank you. Help us to continue to love one another without the simulation that our hearts will be knitted together in love. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We pray that you allow your Holy Ghost to fall. Fall, Lord, as we look our, our hands unto you, as we look, lift our eyes unto you. Fall, Lord. Fall, Lord, in the name of the Lord, as you did in the day of Pentecost. Fall in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you. We give you glory. Bless all mankind, one by one and name by name. It's all in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Heal somebody's broken heart. Heal somebody's loneliness. Somebody's body has cancer in it. God, in the name of Jesus, heal them right now. Hush, Glory to God. Heal them according to your will. It's all in the name of Jesus Christ.
Let's praise him for the change. 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 Him for the change. You gotta give him praise for the change before the change happens. Let's praise him for the change. Let's give him glory for the change. For the change is already in process. The change is already in process. Oh. 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 I've been changed. I've been changed. And I'm going to be changed again. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trump, I'm going to be changed again. Come on and give God a 15 second praise break. Thirteen more seconds. Eleven more seconds. Nine more seconds. If I be lifted up, I draw on me. Five more seconds. Oh. Now open up your mouth and shabbat the Lord in this place. Open up your mouth and give him glory. Give him glory. Yeah. Lift 
them up. Lift my Savior up. Lift him up. I told y'all last week, I can do this all day. This is what I do. I give God praise every day. I don't wait till Sunday. I give God praise every day. Lift him up. Lift him up. I'm just getting started. Woo! You might as well go ahead and bless the Lord with me. And I hope you're weak. It'll bless your week. The more you lift them up, it'll bless your week. If you bless them now, he'll bless your Monday. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. You bless him, I'll magnify him. You magnify, I'll bless him. But let us do it together. It's better. It's better. It's better when we do it together. You bless him. I'll magnify. You magnify. I'll bless. But let's do it. Do it together. Let's do it together. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Let Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who's been redeemed from the hand? of the enemy the devil thought he had me but I gotta run the water is trouble the water is trouble the water is trouble. The water is trouble. And an angel came down at a certain season when the water was troubled. Whosoever that was sick got in the water first, was healed of whatsoever disease they had. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you need to go ahead and jump in by faith because the water is troubled. And God says, now, not tomorrow, but now. It's your season of the middle. I bless the Lord at all times. I bless the Lord at all times. Here's the Chad Thornton version. I bless the Lord anytime. I said, I'll bless the Lord at any time. Somebody said, you crazy. You just don't know. Me and Elder was, when we went to Waffle House, we were sitting down on eating waffles in Waffle House. And this guy had a nerve to start quoting some scripture. And I got to speaking in tongues. I bless him anywhere. I ain't worried about who looking. When you got something down on the inside, sometimes the scripture, Mother Daisy Thornton, said, quench not the spirit.
some of you need to go ahead and let go let go and let go let go and let go we got to quit but for 10 more seconds somebody let go and let
praise is offering time. Come on, let's keep the spirit of praise coming. Let's keep the spirit of praise going as we get into the spirit of giving. growing in your grace, growing in your wisdom, and growing in your love. We pray that every seed that is sown today by faith, we pray that it would multiply and bring forth fruit in this appropriate season. In Jesus' name, we shout amen. God bless you. Come on. Come right on in the name of Jesus. You may be led by the ushers in Jesus' name.
bless you. Yes, Lord. You know this. Um, yeah, can't you can't you feel it? You gotta be honest. Yeah, I feel the presence of God. Lord, you can't deny you feel the presence of God. You know, I was looking at this bottle of oil and it had fell off the yes. podium twice. Yes. <laughs> and it reminded me of Dagon, that when they brought the Ark of the Covenant into the house, the statue of Dagon just fell. So when the power of God comes, his Holy Ghost falls, that everything that's not like God has got to go with it. Come on and give God a hand, praise. Tell somebody, Dagon has got to fall. Whatever Dagon, whatever Dagon is in your life, when you get participate in real worship, it has to fall. God bless you. God bless you, my God. We have some church today. And we do give thanks to the Lord for showing up and visiting us. We thank God for allowing, for using Bishop Chad to bring forth the word and for the, the word of the Lord. And we do thank God for the choir, the praise team, the musicians, and it's just better. It's just better when we, when the sheep gather together in corporate worship, there is a difference. Glory to God. And it's better when we come into God's house and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. It makes a difference, not just for me, not just for you, but for everybody. And everyone can be blessed of God in the name of the Lord. God bless you. We pray that all that has taken place today falls on good ground. And you carry that spirit throughout the week. Glory to God. You invest in the things of God. And your mind alone will be better in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Let us all stand. Pray, continue to pray one for the other that the Lord may have his way in each of our lives. With uplifting hands, the Lord of peace himself grant you peace always. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It's all in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.